Hey everyone, it's finally that time. I know you guys have been asking about this for a very long time now, and I have finally gotten down to it. You'll have to excuse me if I sound tired, I did just wake up, but let's go ahead and get on right into it. So instead of just business, we got the new business, totally spiced up the name. Right inside here, it's just a notice, like, don't steal my pack, use it for, you know, ulterior motives. And then inside of that, we have 13 folders here. And of course, we want to start off with a restore point, so just go in here, double click, and for your C drive, make sure that system protection is turned on, and make sure that you have at least like 15 gigabytes saved for it. And then once you're inside of that, just hit create, hit K, hit enter. It's going to go ahead and take a minute. Oh, never mind. Computer really calling me out right now. And then afterwards, we're done with that folder. And then if you've recently seen my new PowerPen video, either core.pow or corv.pow is one of the best ones that I would recommend. I'm going to go ahead with corv.pow. And what we're going to do here is just click off up to the side up here, hit copy, and then go ahead and open up your command prompt. And then once you're here, you just want to type this in power CFG dash import and then you want to start your first quotation mark right there after that hit paste and then next thing you need to do is type in the backslash and then corvi dot pow and then end quotation mark after that it'll say imported power scheme successfully so we can close out of this go into choose a power plan if I could learn how to type and then under additional you will see Corby's power plan. On to step three, we have unpart cores. And for those of you wondering, this is fundamentally the same as the last full PC guide, except I've taken a few things out and have added a few more things in. But a lot of people I've run into haven't even done the full PC guide. And if they have done it, they didn't do all of it. So make sure that you do all of these steps if you want to see the most performance. So inside of this text document, we have unpark CPU and we have part control. Now I'm going to go over both of these because because sometimes the first one doesn't work. So go ahead and copy this, open up a browser, and then just paste and go. It's gonna go ahead and download the folder. Just go ahead and drag off to the side. Then I'm also going to grab this one because like I said, sometimes the first one doesn't work. You'll just wanna paste and go for part control and then just download part control right here. Drag it off to the side too. And then we can close out of our browser for now. The next step being of course is you want to extract the folder. I know that sometimes people don't extract it. You always want to extract if you have a zipped folder and then make sure this is ran as an admin. Once you're here, you'll see enabled cores and parked cores, and you'll just want to make sure that the slider is dragged to 100% or just hit unpark all, hit apply, and then close out. And if that doesn't unpark your cores, we have park control as our backup option. So go ahead and just run through the installation of that real quick. And then once you're here, you'll see all of these options and you just want to set them to off or at 100%. And then mine doesn't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a picture up on screen. But if you have extra options here, I believe it's the hetero genius policy and if it says four you'll just want to go ahead and set it to the top default value and i'll make sure to throw that up on the screen too but afterwards just go ahead and follow through with that hit apply and then all of your cores should be in park and then with park control feel free to uninstall the program after because we just need it for its initial setup so feel free to go ahead and clean up along the way too if you want so just delete the unneeded folders afterwards and i do recommend creating a keep folder because something's here that we do want to keep so on to number four now I have this bat that you can run. Just to explain it real quick, so echo is just text that you'll see once you run the bat. And right now I'm just saying run the bat as admin, and then it's starting in five seconds, and then I have the timer right here. And then key components that will be disabled is Bluetooth, Hyper-V, printer, Q-Wave, and of course, we have a whole bunch of other stuff too, and I did make sure to label everything. So if you feel like looking through this yourself, then feel free to do so. So once again, make sure that we run as an admin. Just like I said, run the bat as admin, starting in five seconds. It's going to say operation completed successfully if you did it correct. And then of course, we got a little subscribe to Corvi Tech. If you don't, I know where you live. And then if you have an HDD inside of your system, you're going to want to go ahead and re-enable system main. So once again, just run it as an admin. I only have an SSD, so I'm going to leave it alone. And this little note in here, basically just saying what I just said right there. And then inside of the revert pack, you can obviously just revert anything that you want or need. So if you use your printer, for example, run as admin. If you need your VR audio, go ahead and run Q-Wave as an admin. And then obviously if you need your Bluetooth or, you know, just, just anything you need. 
And then the next step we have here is a program called Auto Runs from Microsoft. And we're just going to want to go ahead and run this as an admin too. Go ahead, hit agree. And then it will take a second to load everything. Mine was actually pretty quick. And then here we just want to disable everything that we don't want on startup. So Microsoft Edge, OneDrive, Epic Games Launcher, Riot, Steam. I'm going to leave my audio on. We got Riot Vanguard. And then some of these I would recommend not touching because they can break some stuff. So I'm not touching Microsoft Edge or NA. I will get rid of some more OneDrive stuff. I like unchecking EPP. And then here we have a lot more OneDrive stuff. And then here we have some more Microsoft Edge things that we can disable. Scroll on down. And then for NVIDIA people, we have a few things here that we can disable. So we want to get rid of crash reports. And then we want to get rid of the profile updater on logon. And then if you read this one right here, it also says driver update check daily. So we want to get rid of that too. Same with the GeForce Experience self update. We have more OneDrive, Park Control. We're going to uninstall that sometime later anyways we'll just scroll on through and just disable everything that you don't use like don't just copy me exactly but if you have more that you can disable then go for it as long as you know what it is that you are disabling so we have frame view sdk here we want to get rid of that because no one ever really uses it and be mindful of where you disable things so this is services so you don't want to disable most things in here otherwise you might break your application as a whole and then next we go on to the driver section and i'm going to end up disabling blue Bluetooth completely so if you see something that says Bluetooth over on this side feel free to disable it so I see another Bluetooth right there I see Nvidia virtual audio so I'm going to disable that as well and then you'll see a few more things towards the bottom I honestly wouldn't really mess with these ones at all so feel free to just close out after that and then back at this page we have all Windows settings so first up is display Scroll on down and make sure that your refresh is at the highest. Your screen might go black for a second if you aren't at the highest. And it's just going to say keep changes or revert. We want to keep, obviously. So then going back to display. And then here under graphic settings, you'll just want to add your game to this list. So Fortnite, for example, going to be installed here. Program files, Epic Games, Fortnite, Fortnite game, binaries, 164. And then you want to look for the Win64 shipping. It says that's already added. And then once your game is added you want to go to options and then just select high performance after that at the top here we want to change default graphic settings and we just want to make sure that hags is enabled same for optimizations for windowed games after that you can close out going over to notifications and turn those off as well then storage sense for the most part it's okay leaving this on but if you want to free up some CPU cycles, then I recommend turning it off. Said Windows 10 for Bluetooth, but in all reality, it doesn't really matter if it's Windows 10 or 11. Head on into Bluetooth, and if you don't use it, just hit turn off or disable. And for some people, there won't be a button for you to turn this off at all. So we're going to be doing it through Device Manager sometime later. Number five, we have mouse, and we just want to go to Additional Mouse Settings. Head on over to Pointers, and set it to None. Pointer Options, we want to turn off Enhanced Pointer Position and hit apply. And for those of you that don't know, this option here is basically like a dynamic sense. So if we turn it off, our sense will become more steady, kind of giving it a one-to-one -one ratio for your movements. Now, inside of colors, we would just want to disable transparency fix right here and change it to dark mode. Doesn't help your performance at all to change it to dark mode. It's just personal preference. Next, we have startup apps. We just want to turn off everything that we don't use. I currently don't have a lot in here, but I do like getting rid of the notification icon for Windows security. And if you have any other startup apps, please turn off everything that you don't use on a daily basis. When I was doing my optimization service, I would see people that had like 300 processes in the background, and it's all because they had so many startup apps. So please go through this, turn off as many as you can. And then next we have apps itself, and we're just going to go through and uninstall everything that we don't use. So calculator, let's get rid of it. Camera, uninstall. Cortana, we're going to get rid of her. And then my next one is going to be Feedback Hub. And you don't have to follow along with me as I do this. Just uninstall everything that you don't use. And please make sure you know what it is before you disable it. So like, if you see the Microsoft Visual C++, like, please don't get rid of that. You need it. So make sure that you don't disable anything that you don't know what it does or if it looks important. So next we got mail and calendar. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. And then we have maps, media player, 
Microsoft 365, Clip Champ. Like Windows comes with so much bloat. Like it's a hassle getting rid of all of it all the time. We got rid of Microsoft Copilot, getting rid of OneDrive. Now OneDrive won't allow you to get rid of it immediately. It takes some time to load up, but it will pop up eventually. There we go. Took it just a second. And next we have news that we're going to get rid of. And then if you have an NVIDIA driver, you'll see that there's a lot of bloat here. So we want to get rid of the FrameView SDK. Afterwards, we want to get rid of the HD audio driver. It's going to ask if you want to restart. I think, unfortunately, we will have to do it if we want to keep on getting rid of NVIDIA bloat. But I'm going to see real quick. Yeah, so it says system restart is required to keep on going. So let's go ahead, do a quick reboot, come right back here. All right, now that we're back, we can go ahead and finish through with the debloat. So go ahead and uninstall PhysX as long as you don't use it. And then Outlook, we can go ahead and get rid of two. Paint, don't need it, uninstall. Once again, we're getting rid of park control. Next, we have people, photos, power automate we want to get rid of. Quick assist, it's gone. Solitaire and casual games, get rid of that. Spotify does come on as bloat, so if you don't use it, then get rid of it. Sticky notes, we don't need. Weather, we want to get rid of that. Windows clock, remove. And then Xbox. Only keep these if you use it for specific games. And then once again, just go on through and uninstall anything else that you don't use. Since my machine is basically a blank slate, it doesn't have a lot to remove. Next up on the list, we have game mode. We want to make sure that this is turned on too. And then for Windows 10 game bar, it will ask if you want it enabled or disabled. And you will want to go ahead and disable it. 11, visual effects. We just want to click this button right here and make sure that animation and transparency effects are turned off. For Windows 10 users, I'm pretty sure it won't go to the right section. So just make sure that you go to accessibility and then look for visual effects. Number 12, keyboard. We just want to go ahead and make sure that these three here are disabled. 13, privacy. Under general, we want to make sure that all of these are turned off. Next up, go to inking and typing. Make sure that that is turned off too. Diagnostics and feedback, we want to make sure that this is disabled, turned off. And then activity history, if you care about it, feel free to turn that off too. And then Windows 10 users, if you scroll on down, you will see a section down here called background apps. You just want to go ahead and make sure that background apps are turned off. For number 14, I did leave a little shortcut for you guys. Anyone on Windows 11, you will not be able to get to it. So number 15 for download. Basically, we just want to head on over to delivery optimization and disable allow downloads from other PCs. And if you wonder what that is, it has a little note right here kind of saying what it is. And basically what that does is if you're installing Steam, for example, you might get that download from another device and sometimes files can be corrupt or the installation isn't very good. So it's always good to turn this off and get the freshest download from Steam themselves. And then once we're done with that, we want to go to advanced options and just change the settings right here. And this limits how much Windows can use for updates in general in the background. So we want to go ahead and turn that all off too. And then onto GPU, I do have both AMD and an NVIDIA guide. So for AMD users, I have this little note here. And for those of you in my Discord, you probably know TJ by now. And he went ahead and lent me this AMD guide to use. Shout out to him for that. But for NVIDIA users, I can go ahead and show you the process with that. So the first up, we have NV Clean install. And I have a link that goes directly to it. So go ahead, just hit this download button. And then choose the server that's closest to you. And then just drag NV Clean install out here. And then afterwards, go ahead and run it as an administrator. Head on down to manually select a driver version. And then in most cases, I currently recommend 546.29 or .33. And if you're not a gamer, then studio drivers might be better for you. So feel free to get studio drivers instead. And if you're on a notebook, then a notebook driver version should show up for you. But since we just have a normal desktop, I'm choosing 546.29. Hit next. And then components to install. This basically is all of NVIDIA's bloat. So we want to make sure it's as minimal as possible. If you use GeForce Experience for clips, you do need to select shadow to play hit next it's going to say would you like to install these components too and then if you hit next again it'll show up one more time so go ahead and hit yes too 
and then everything that you need for shadow play will be installed but if you use the new nvidia app you can go ahead and just leave this on the minimum and since i do use shadow play i'm going to go ahead and check all of these and then just hit next it'll go ahead and go through with the download real quick and then here we have some extra installation tweaks so we want to get rid of installer telemetry and advertising we want to go ahead and make this an unattended express installation we're going to want to go ahead and perform a clean installation and then a lot of people talk about how mpo can cause flickering stuttering and a whole lot of more issues so most people do recommend disabling it but i will go ahead and show you how to do it by hand too because amd users i know you guys probably want to disable this too so go ahead and type regedit in the run and then once we're here we want to go to local machine software microsoft and then go down until you find windows and then once you're inside of windows head on over to dwm and you want to create a new dword 32-bit value and call it overlay test mode if i can spell right and then you want to change it to five now i should keep in mind that disabling this may break some of the windows full screen optimization stuff so make sure to keep that in mind if you do decide to do this tweak disabling ansel i believe that's just a photo mode or photo effects if you don't use it just disable it and then under expert tweaks i think previously i did recommend disabling driver telemetry but i am going to retcon that i I think that caused a lot of stuttering. I do, however, recommend that you disable the HD audio sleep device timer. And we want to enable MSI mode and set it to high priority. And then also HDCP, for those of you that don't know, that means high definition content protection. And it's supposed to eat a lot of performance. If you want to know what any of the rest of these do, it does have a help button here that will send you to a link that explains everything, which I highly recommend you do. Don't just do all of this stuff blindly, you know. And then lastly, we have the install here. So go ahead, just hit install. It'll run through. And after the installation, we'll come right back through and finish the rest. All right, so now that the driver is installed, we want to go ahead and head back to NVIDIA and download the profile inspector where I do have a custom profile to use if you want to use it. So go ahead, follow through with the link, drag it on over, and then go ahead and extract it as always. Go ahead and open it up. And then this is the part where you just grab the NIP file right here, drag it on top. It'll import everything. It'll say profile successfully imported. Let's go ahead and hit apply. Next up on the list for both AMD and NVIDIA users, I want you to install MSI Afterburner. So go ahead and look for the final release right here. Go ahead and drag it onto your screen and extract and then just follow through with the setup. So English, next, accept, and then you want to uncheck Rivatuner. And then afterwards, you can just go ahead and keep on scrolling through. And then I like hitting do not create shortcuts. And then lastly, uncheck the shell readme and run MSI. So now that we have MSI open, we want to go ahead and select the blue windows here. And if you just hover, it'll show you what it does. Because a lot of people like asking me what it does, but fundamentally, it's just apply at Windows Startup. And it'll do everything from current voltage, clock and fan control, you know, everything. Afterwards, head on over to the settings and start with Windows, start minimized. And then this is just a personal preference, but I like turning it so it doesn't ever check for product updates. But if you're one of the people that likes making sure it always stays up to date, I would recommend just setting it to on startup monthly. AMD users, you want to go ahead and disable ULPS. And as the pop-up says here, it's an ultra low power state mode. And for obvious reasons, we want to go ahead and turn off the power saving mode. Next up, under fan controls, you can either leave this at the default user defined, or if you want the fan curve that I use. I do 60 and 30 and then 70 and 50. And then I just drag this one up to the top right here at 180. And then next you want to go ahead and set this to 10,000 update period. Afterwards, under monitoring, we want to go ahead and uncheck basically everything except for your CPU temps. CPU 1 to however many that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all of these. And the only one that you want to keep is CPU temperature as a whole make sure that it doesn't have a number next to it and then feel free to uncheck the rest of these in this list too now after you have everything else unchecked we also want to set this to 10,000 too afterwards hit apply hit ok and then make sure that this is minimized after you want it running in the background at all times lastly on this list i did make a video on msi utility so feel free to check it out as well and anything that supports msi mode we want to go ahead and make sure that it is enabled so the clean install with the driver already set 
that's the high priority. That's the main thing that you want to do here. But you can also set your Ethernet or Wi-Fi adapter to high priority too, and then just hit apply. Next up on the list, we have some registry tweaks here. And I do have a little notice here that restore points don't revert reg tweaks. So write down the values you have before applying the tweaks. So you can know what value it is by one, just going into edit. And then if you copy this path and then head on into registry editor, you can go ahead and paste it, get rid of the end brackets here, hit enter. And then as you see here, the default value for this is one and this reg will set it to zero. And what driver searching does is it stops Windows from actively searching for drivers in the background. And that's a very huge oversimplification of it, but fundamentally that is what it does. Disable hybrid, this is disabling hibernation. So if you know your power and sleep options, it's basically just getting rid of that. Disable prefetch. If you guys didn't know, but Windows actually prefetches a lot of things in the background. So if we hit Windows R, type in prefetch, you'll go ahead and see this folder here where Windows just prefetches a lot of things and takes up a lot of space. So later down the line, we are going to clear that out, but this wretch here stops Windows from prefetching. So we want to go ahead and run that. And then startup delay, this basically makes Explorer startup a little bit faster. Over time, this is a mouse tweak. It's basically when you hover over something, it'll make it a little bit faster. And the menu show delay, it's fundamentally the same principle as the last one. And the next we have a reg here called dynamic P state. And for this one, I have detailed instructions on how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that up to the side. And then step one is opening up your device manager. And then under display adapters, you want to right click on your GPU and on over to properties, details, and then under property, look down until you see class GUID. And then we just want to right click. Copy that, close on out of device manager now, and then inside of your registry editor, we want to go ahead and make sure that you are scrolled up to the top. Close out other folders if you do have them open, and then click on system here, and then go to edit, find next, and then just paste it right here. It's going to go ahead and find it for you. We just want to scroll off to the side, and then here you'll see 0000 or 0001. And you want to go ahead and make sure that you're inside of that folder, right click new D word 32 bit value. And then you just want to follow this as you see it on screen. So disable dynamic P state, P state is a power saving mode. So we want to go ahead and make sure that it is disabled and we want to set this to a value of one after. And if you want to revert that at any time, just go ahead and delete the value and you'll be fine. And then here under network tweaks, we have the first one being disable unused adapters. So go ahead and open up your device manager, head on over to network adapters and just get rid of everything that you don't use. So the only one that I currently use is my ethernet server adapter. So I'm going to disable Wi-Fi and disable all of these WAN mini ports too. Now you might ask, why are we doing this? Well, once again, if you read up on my MSI mode video, you know that you're system is constantly pulling devices at all times so if we disable them it makes it that much faster and the next we just want to go ahead and optimize it so head on into your network settings go on to whichever you're using right now so once again i have ethernet but it might say wi-fi for you and you just want to look for a setting called metered connection and you want to go ahead and turn that on that'll basically allow for the settings that we applied back in windows to apply properly but i will mention that some apps might work differently while you have the metered connection enabled so if you run into any issues, just go ahead and revert it. And then afterwards, come back to the main page and go to advanced network settings. And then once again, if your Wi-Fi isn't disabled yet, go ahead and just disable it. We want to go ahead and head into more adapter options. And Windows 10 users, this will look slightly different for you. Just look for something like advanced network settings, or maybe it is more adapter options too. Once we're in here, you can either disable all three of these, since they aren't critical for your adapter to run. You can disable the LLPD protocol driver, and then you can also disable these link layer topology discovery responders too. But I will mention that once again, you should just be applying these blindly so feel free to look all of these up too which i do recommend that you do because i know for some the qos packet scheduler is better to have on so once again please test these out for yourself i've had many people that disable this and then they have buffering in their videos or games so i can't stress it enough afterwards we want to hit ok and then head on back into it that just makes sure that the other ones that we unchecked still apply and then under ipv4 we want to head into properties and then use the following dns server and then once we're here, hit Windows key and R, type CMD and enter. And then once we're here, we just want to type ping and then 
1.1.1.1 and hit enter. It'll go ahead and get you some ping results and then go ahead and immediately after ping the same thing but with eights. And for those of you that don't know, the ones up here is Cloudflare and the eights is Google. And then out of the two, we want to select the better average. So in my case, it is Cloudflare. So I'm going to close out of that and type the address that I initially showed you. And then their secondary server, which is 1.0.0.1. Google users, I'm going to go ahead and throw up on screen the ones that you would use if your ping is better with Google. Afterwards, just hit OK. And then at the top here with configure, we want to go ahead and open up this. And then right away, power management mode, we want to uncheck this. And then as you see here, it's just allow this computer to turn off this device. So we don't want that. We want our connection to stay on at all times. Afterwards, head to advanced and then feel free to follow through with some of these settings. I know it's not exactly the same as yours, so just do the best you can. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the key points here. So ARP offload, we want to turn that off. Interrupt moderation, we also want disabled. LSO, we also want disabled too. RSS queues, we want to go ahead and set it to two. NS offload, we also want disabled. Packet priority, you do want to turn this on to enabled. Receive buffers, some people that have real tech will be capped at 512 here, but it's not for all real tech drivers, but it is for most of them. And depending on how much RAM space you have, you can turn this higher. I like leaving this on 1024, so one gigabyte. Afterwards, speed and duplex, please leave this on auto because sometimes setting it to one gigabyte full duplex or, or anything else you know can actually cause a lot more network issues so please just leave it on auto next up we have transmit buffers and we want it to double what our receive buffers are so that'll be 2048 for me and once again, some real tech folks out there, you're going to be capped at 128, which yeah, it sucks. But the only way you can change that is if you want to go ahead and buy a new adapter to plug in. Like this adapter now is actually one that I did plug in myself. So it's honestly not a super hard process to do unless you're on laptop. Of course, if you're on laptop, I I'm so sorry you're cooked. Afterwards, we just want to hit OK and it'll disconnect us from the Internet for a little bit, but it should come back on relatively fast. Last but not least we have TCP optimizer and I do have a readme here just because everyone likes to bully me but fundamentally what this says is that yes multiplayer games use UDP but it's important to have the TCP optimized because it can affect your UDP connectivity as well don't get mad and bully me in the comments because I use TCP optimizer like some of you guys can get really mean about that and then afterwards we have the link directly to get TCP optimizer we want to just go ahead and drag that off to the side and let's keep in mind here to delete the things that we don't need anymore more so cleaning up a bit of the GPU mess and the first thing that we actually do want to drag in here is our MSI so feel free to do that afterwards we want to go ahead and run TCP as an admin it'll go ahead and load up real quick but it shouldn't take too too long and the first thing we want to do is drag our connection speed up to the max next hit custom and then go ahead and follow through with the settings as you see on screen so for auto tuning we want this disabled I will keep in mind though that this will tank your network speeds by a lot in most cases but it's important to keep it disabled if you care more about your system latency. Next, we have the congestion control provider and cubic is best for throughput or speeds, as you know, and CTCP is better for latency. And then I have this set as disabled for RSS because it can be a little buggy for some adapters. And then RSC, we want to keep this disabled too. And once again, if you want to know what any of this is, just hover over it and it'll tell you. Afterwards, we want to set TTL to 64 and then ENC to enabled. And then check some offloading. If you have a good CPU, then keep it disabled. But if your CPU is on the lower end, then leave it enabled. For TCP 1323 timestamps, you do want to leave this enabled. What this is, is that it allows direct memory access between the network card and application we want to go ahead and leave that on and then next under advanced settings we want to go ahead and adjust these two top settings to 10 and once again if you go ahead and hover over it it tells you exactly what it does and its recommended value next up we have priorities that we want to set and then max and retransmissions, we want to set this down to a value of two. And if you have it too high, you might accidentally DDoS yourself, which is obviously no bueno. So two in most cases is the best value. Initial RTO, it is recommended to leave it to a value of 2000. QoS non-best effort limit, this is basically the bandwidth that Windows has in reserve for updates or other stuff. And we want to go ahead and make sure that they have that value of 0%. Network throttling index, I heard that full disabled here can actually cause some issues so it might be better to leave it at 10 in some cases but i haven't noticed anything with full disabled so i'm going to leave it as such now for network throttling some people do say that disabled can cause dpc spikes but 
I haven't noticed any personally, but if you do run into that issue, go ahead and try this on default again and see if it fixes it. System responsiveness, we do want this set to zero for pure gaming. And what this does is, as it says here, it reserves a percent of the CPU resources for background processes. Nagel's algorithm, I do run into issues when I use this. So in most cases, I recommend just leaving this as the default. Large system cache can cause some network issues as well. So go ahead and leave that on default. And then max user ports, we want to set this to 65534. And then the TCP time to wait delay, set it to 30. Afterwards, hit apply, create a backup. Always better to be safe than sorry. And then hit OK. And you might lose your network connectivity again, but it's completely fine. It'll show back up again in just a moment. It'll ask you if you want to take a reboot. And we're obviously going to say no. Afterwards, you can go ahead and close on out and then create a new folder and just call it network. And you want to go ahead and drag TCP optimizer and both your backups in here and then drag it over to your keep folder. And then just as a heads up, if you do run into network issues, go ahead, load into this as an admin again, and then just select Windows default, hit apply, and then go ahead and follow through with the prompts that it gives you. Now that we're done with network tweaks, we have a device cleaner here, and we want to go ahead and run this as an admin. And this basically just clears out everything that hasn't been used. So go ahead and select all, remove selected, and then head on back to device cleaner. And then here we have device manager. It's an empty tech stock. Go ahead and just follow me. So after you have device manager open, if you don't use Bluetooth, go ahead and disable it. And then next, go to your display adapter and make sure that it's highlighted. Hit view devices by connection. And then the high definition audio controller. Most people don't use this, so you can disable it. And, and I believe most people know that audio controllers do have some pretty high latency with them. And then I do want to point out that you want the high precision event timer enabled. And a lot of tweakers say to disable this, but they honestly just don't know better, which don't get the wrong idea. I'm not saying that I'm all high and mighty. I'm just saying disabling this will cause system instability and you don't want that. Especially if you have it disabled in BIOS 2, like please re-enable this at all cost. And then if you scroll on down towards the bottom, if you have something called system speaker, you don't need that too. So feel free to disable it as well. On to system explorer. It's going to go ahead and take you to the download page. You don't have to click anything. There's a few ads. It'll install automatically. And then once you drag it onto your desktop, go ahead and just run through like you would with any installation. It'll show a pop up on your browser. Just go ahead and close it out. Next, it'll say start security check. Just go ahead and hit close. Go ahead and make sure that it's filtered by image name. And then for explorer.exe, we want to go ahead and set this to a high priority on permanent. And what this does is anything that falls under this category should also be high priority, which as you know, most games will fall under this category. Next, we want to go ahead and under process affinity, we want to go ahead and take it off your logical processor one and two. And then if you want to take it off your halfway point plus the one above, it. Those ones usually use your GPU, so take and load off of that as well. But if you do run into any performance issues, go ahead and just re-enable these. And we want to select permanent here as well. And then once again, hit image name. And then once we're done with that, we want to scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see when log on. And we just want to go ahead and set the priority here to below normal and set it to permanent as well. And as you see here, the only things that fall under it is DWM and font host. And DWM can eat up a lot of resources. So that's kind of why we're leaving it on a lower priority as well. And then afterwards, you can close out of these other pop-ups too. You don't necessarily need them. And then with the three bars right here, head on down to options. And then you want to just turn off this here. It'll pop up some system information like this. I don't know if it's showing up on screen, but unchecking this will basically make it so it doesn't show up anymore. Because honestly, that can get very annoying. So go ahead and hit save. And then here under update speed, we want to set it to slow or paused. Because honestly, you don't really need this too often. So after that, hit the X, hit do not show again, and then hit OK. And this is one of our next things that we want inside of the keep folder. Next up on the list, we have some telemetry removal. So we want to go ahead and run both of these. And then in WPD, we want to go ahead and get rid of these telemetry options. And what telemetry is, is it's basically like Microsoft tracking. So we don't want them doing that, of course. They can get their own information from someone else. And then telemetry IPs basically stop them from connecting. Next, under blocker, we want to go ahead and make sure that your Windows Defender is enabled. And then if you don't use any Microsoft apps, go ahead and disable this too. But keep in mind, Minecraft does count as a Microsoft app. So if you play that game, then don't use it. Next up under apps, we're going to go through with some more deep loading. So I don't currently use Game Bar, for example. I don't use their Get Help system. Get rid of Microsoft Tips. Get rid of OneDrive because for some reason it didn't do that before. Anything else that you don't use that you 
you know what it does do, feel free to get rid of that as well. Whatever you do, do not hit delete all. Do not do it. It is such a huge hassle to get everything back. Please take your time. Breathe. Breathing is what I should have done this whole time. I'm out of breath and losing my voice. And then afterwards, just close on out of it. And then in the O and O, we want to go ahead and apply only the recommended settings. And it's going to ask if you want to restore points. And you don't really need to do it. We set one up at the start. So I'm going to hit no. And it'll just apply everything. And this will mess with your clipboard storage history, for example. So if you run into any issues, just go ahead ahead and hit undo all changes to restore everything. Afterwards, hit X, go ahead and hit do not show this message again, hit OK, and hit OK. So my recording crashed and I went through with the rest of the optimization, so I'm a little bit disheartened right now. So I'm going to go ahead and try to find out where, where I left off. I believe it was with Windows Tweaker, right? So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall Windows Tweaker real quick because I ended up deleting it. So after we have that open back up again, I'm just going to start over from scratch, make sure that you run the system file checker utility and then under customization make sure that disable transparency is checked along with disable start animations hit apply go on down to performance where you want to make sure that all of these are set to a thousand which if you take the time to read these you'll see exactly what they do and then we also have some other settings down here that i recommend checking all of them as well unless if you use your printer or if you have a hard drive you want to go ahead and make sure that those are unchecked once again hit apply the background scan has finished so go ahead on to system information where you want to run the DISM scan afterwards. And then next under security and privacy, we want to go ahead and disable OneDrive and turn off user tracking. So hit apply there. And then under privacy, we want to go ahead and disable all of these as well that you don't use. So if you use a camera, don't disable it. And if you use a microphone, don't disable it there too. So afterwards hit apply again. And then under browsers, this is in the 5.1 version only, I believe, but you want to disable the edge tab preview. And once again, hit apply. And then under additional, you want to enable the onboard adapter processor and you want to restrict access over anonymous connections, disable recent shares and hide entire network from network neighborhood, along with prevent network auto discovery, hide computer from the browser list. Then you want to enable the NT LAN manager, which improves security on your device by a large amount. And if you want to know what any of these do, hover over it and then look towards the bottom and it'll show you what it does. So for the onboard processor, it says at the bottom there, if your network Work adapter has an integrated processor, it can help free up your main CPU and increase performance. So go ahead, just make sure that everything is applied and then close on out. After the wind tweaker, we are onto the finale where you want to install CC Cleaner and it is the pro trial. Not that we necessarily need it. It is just nice to have. And then we also have MSCRT. So we want to go ahead and follow through with that download. And then while that downloads, go ahead and finish the installation for the CC Cleaner installation and go ahead and run that as well. And then we'll come back to CC Cleaner in just a moment. I want you to drag these last four files out real quick and we won't need my pack anymore so go ahead and close that out too and then under prefetch since i already did this a minute ago when it wasn't recording it's currently empty but you just want to hit Control a on your keyboard and then delete everything and then next under system properties you want to go ahead and adjust this for best performance and then most people like having the thumbnails instead of icons along with the smooth edges of screen fonts so go ahead hit apply there hit ok and then the same thing with temp2 go Go ahead and hit Control A and delete everything inside of here. Same thing with the temp 2, which I actually did accumulate some extra stuff here, so I can actually show you for this one. And then if it doesn't allow you to do it because it's open in another program, just go ahead and skip everything. Now that MSCRT is done, go ahead and drag it over to your desktop and run through with it. Now, once you're here, accept all terms, hit next, next, and then do a full scan. And what this does is it looks for any corrupt files or malware on your system, which please do not make this your main antivirus. It is not meant to be an antivirus, but it does a very good job at finding any sorts of file corruption and deletes it at the end of the scan. And then for the last thing that we're doing here is we have CC Cleaner and we just want to do a health check. So scan PC. It's going to ask you to close out Chrome or any other browser that you have in the background. And then once we're here on this screen, the top one cookies, it'll get rid of all of your login info along with any other website data that you have to. So if you want to stay logged into websites, go ahead and uncheck this. And then if you want to keep your browser history or download history, go ahead and uncheck that as well. But since I don't really care about either of those, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they're all checked.
correct. Then next up on the list, it has other options that can be cleaned too. So recycle bin, temporary system files, and application cache. We can go ahead and clean up all of those as well. And I know a lot of people hate CC Cleaner because it used to be bundleware back in the day, but it's completely safe to use now, especially because I'm just giving you the direct download link. The next thing we want to do inside of here though is head over to registry and scan for issues. And a lot of people are skeptical on the effectiveness of using a registry cleaner, but honestly, I haven't run into any issues using it before. And either way, you have this option to back up the registry, which I do recommend that you do. So hit yes, go ahead, click your desktop, hit save, and then just fix all selected issues. Afterwards, head on over to tools where we will be uninstalling CC cleaner. And then that's the last you have to hear of it. So the last thing that we do want to do afterwards is get the registry backup and send it over to keep, send MSCRT over to keep, and then you can delete the system property shortcut. So delete that. And then if you want to keep all of these to check on them from time to time and delete them, go ahead and put that in keep too. Ultimate Windows Tweaker, I can get rid of. And then lastly, for the new business folder, you honestly can just trash it. You don't need it anymore. So instead of your keep folder, you should have all of these and anything else that you downloaded with this guide, you can get rid of. And then just go ahead and clear out your recycle bin once again. The very last thing that you need to do is just let that scan finish and then reboot. And then finally, I can get onto the benchmarks. And then for games, I chose the games that seem to be the most popular on Twitch at the time. So I chose Fortnite, Valorant, and Counter-Strike. And for my pre-benchmarks, or before I did all the tweaks, Valorant could not go a full game without crashing. And I did try many times. The first time it crashed after the fourth match. And then the next time after like the 15th or 16th. So I wasn't able to get pre-benchmarks for them, but everything else I do have pre-benchmarks for. So go ahead, feel free to look at the graphs here. As always, I use Cap Frame X and Latency Mon to get all of my benchmarks. With that, everyone, I know it's not fundamentally too different from my first full PC optimization guide, but I did knock out a few things. And honestly, the majority of people I noticed didn't even do that guide. So please give it a shot. It's worth it. I promise. And if it's not, you got that restore point. I really do appreciate the support, everyone. I know watching long videos isn't really fun for, for anyone, including myself. Because, hey, I have to be out here recording and editing it. I do appreciate that, everyone. Love you guys as always, and I'll see you guys in the next one.